mm, mm. Peace, my beautiful family. It's O M O N Y A M E, the Afrocentric creature. It's here to raise the vibrations of the entire Black nation. And I'm here with another video. Um, this one, hold on, let me take a sip of my tea. If y'all haven't been drinking tea during this time, I really highly, highly, highly recommend it. One thing I've been doing is drinking ginger tea every day. And I swear, any little chest feeling, any little inkling that you feel like, oh my gosh, do I got the Rona? Not to make a joke out of it, but definitely hit your, your immune system up with some of that tea, okay? Um, but anyway, I'm here today with the video that has been highly requested based off of um, the comments that I received on the Connecting to the Ancestors one-on-one -on -one video. This is something that's been requested a lot, uh, which is book suggestions um, that I have, the things that have helped me along my journey, or just tools that I've known that has helped others that are coming along their spiritual journey, um, you know, what they've been using. So I put together a list of books and I have the pictures of the books here. So that way, when you're searching for it online, you can easily find it. And I'll go through the ones that I've actually read myself. And it's a few of them that I haven't read, but I'll acknowledge that as well. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into it. How about that? Um, the first book that helped me along my journey, it wasn't actually the first book that I read, but it is a book that I recommend as a first book uh, for people to read because this book here is more of a general idea of what the foundation of all African spiritual practices and belief systems are. Um, and it doesn't go too deep or heavy into one in particular. Um, it is called Root Work. Some of y'all might be familiar of it. Some of y'all may not. I know I wasn't familiar with it until I read it. I actually got this book from the library. So some local libraries sell it, but it's also sold on Amazon. Um, I think I saw it in Target. Um, you can, it's very easily attainable. It's by Tiana Lee McKillar. She's a black author. She just talks about the fundamentals of African spiritual belief systems. And I think it's just pretty, it's a pretty good tool for people who want to practice, but even those who don't want to practice, but want to get a better idea of what African spirituality is, right? Um, I also wanted to add here that she has her own tarot deck called the Hoodoo Tarot. Um, I don't have this deck yet myself, but I know a few people that do. The pictures on the deck, the, the imagery is absolutely beautiful. It's something that I definitely connect to. I plan on buying my own deck uh, soon enough. Um, but I wanted to share that deck as well, just because a lot of us um, are using tarot decks. And not to say that it has to be a bad thing, but maybe it's something that other people want to be conscious of, because I know I do as well. Um, we're using tarot decks that were not created by... Um, black or african people so for instance here i have the tarot of the orishas and i also have the new orleans voodoo tarot deck and it wasn't until and i have a few other decks but the rider way deck i already knew wasn't made by an african person because the pictures on it are white people um these two tarot decks in particular i actually didn't find out and so after the fact, after buying them, that they weren't actually made by African descended people um, through a sister who actually did that research um, to find that information out. Um, so anyway, if you all were looking for hoodoo, I mean, tarot decks that were actually created by black people, Tiana, Tiana Lee McKiller, she has her own um, tarot deck. And I, and I think it's a, a beautiful one. OK, um, so this is actually the first book that I read along my journey, the Haitian Voodoo uh, Handbook. I keep trying to say tarot deck. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Haitian Voodoo Handbook was the first book that I read along my journey. Um, I was taking a class. I actually bought the book because I was taking a class called The African Spirits, Folklore, and Magic of Africa and the Caribbean. And one thing that we talked about, well, we talked about all different African uh, religious systems or religious systems that stem from Africa and Haitian voodoo was one of those things. Um, so I had picked up this book because I wrote a paper on it and who was to know that again, it would be the beginning of a beautiful journey that I've been on ever since. Um, this book, I'm sharing this one. And then I'm also sharing this one, which is the New Orleans voodoo handbook. I have not read the New Orleans voodoo handbook, but I have heard great things about it. 
I've only read this Haitian voodoo handbook, uh, at least the one. They're both written by the same author. That's the point that I'm trying to make. They're both written by an author named Kanaz Filon. He does practice African spirituality, but I also want to let y'all know that he is not African. He's not melanated. That wasn't something that I knew when I bought the book, but I feel like some people really care to have that information. So I wanted to give that to you and also let you know that um, the reason that I stand by the book or I'm even sharing it is because I think he does a great job at appreciating African spirituality for all it is, for giving a great history of it. Um, I do believe in the introduction he acknowledges that he's not African. Um, I do believe he does, um, at least in the Haitian voodoo handbook. I'm not sure about the New Orleans voodoo handbook, but he does a great job at keeping the integrity of the religion intact. He's not negatively biased at all, um, and it's a very informative book. Um, if you are more into the African um, spiritual system at its root, this is still a great book, but just know that um, while we in African systems and even in America call um, the deities Orisha, um, within Haitian voodoo, they call them Loa. So the names change. Some of the deities don't have the same names, but they are similar, you know, as far as their energies, who they represent. It can cross over, but just wanted to let you know um, that Haitian voodoo as a system, it does differ in some ways from Ifa or uh, even New Orleans voodoo. Um, so just wanted to put that out there, okay? Um, the other book, this one right here, this was a gift from a friend that I got. Uh, his, yeah, he was a friend of mine and he brought this book over. It was when I was already on my African spiritual journey. This was probably like the third book that I read or something like that on my journey. It's called The Handbook of Yoruba Religious Concepts. And this book, I love it so much. It is a black author. Um, it's way shorter than the Haitian voodoo handbook and way shorter than a New Orleans voodoo handbook. And it does a great job at giving you basics about the religion um and i actually purchased that book for uh two people more recently who are also coming along their journey i just think it's a great tool for beginners if they wanted to learn more about yoruba uh as a as a religion um which also just for those who don't know yoruba is the same thing as ifa ifa comes straight from nigeria the yoruba people of nigeria so sometimes um, Yoruba is the name that we that we have for that spiritual practice. So moving forward. Um, so those are books that are just based more in information, very informative books. And now I'm getting more into anthropological um, accounts. And this one is Zora Neale Hurston. Um, I wanted to focus on Zora Neale Hurston because she does a great job at giving anthropological um, experience or I should just say that she gives her own experience and accounts um, with the religion as uh, more than given a lot of information about it, if that makes sense. So if you're interested in that, these are true stories that she's experienced. And I really, really love these books coming along my journey as well. So Zora Neale Hurston, um, this one is Mules and Man. And then she has Tell My Horse. Um, this one is Voodoo and Life in Haiti and Jamaica. So she, she's just going through her accounts of being in both of those places um, and how African spirituality looked in those places. Um, very, very good books. Um, I also added Barracoon, which I haven't read yet. This is a newer Zora Neale Hurston book that was recently published, but I'm adding it because it's a cultural book that even people within African spirituality, actually mainly people in African spirituality, have requested or re recommended this book to me saying that it's very, very useful. Um, and I think just as African people, as we even study our uh, religious or spiritual practices, it's also important to know more about our history and our culture outside of religion um, or how they connect. So that's Barracoon. That's another uh, book suggestion. Now let's get into the womanly books that are for healing. So we're gonna get into that sacred woman um, this is a book that I absolutely love. I still have this book to this day. Um, 
it is not a read through from front to cover, at least not in my opinion. It's more of a directory. It's more of a tool that can be used as a guide. Um, when you're going through something in particular, it has like an index that you can look up things from. It's just a very healing book that I honestly recommend any woman to have. It says a guide to healing the feminine body, mind and spirit. It's helped me so much along my journey. Um, I cried to this book. Um, I've meditated with this book. I've learned a lot from this book. So that's Sacred Woman by Queen Afua. And then we also have Jambalaya. I think a lot of people are more uh, familiar with Jambalaya. Um, and it's a more widespread book. Uh, maybe not now, because actually a lot of people know about Sacred Woman too. But regardless of it, Jambalaya, um, this book is the natural woman's book, it says of personal charms and practical rituals. So again, it's more like a guide. You can read it front to back if you want, but it's more like a guide that you can just continue to go back to. You can highlight parts that you want, fold the pages down to come back to. Um, these are the rituals that you like, that kind of thing. Um, I actually got to meet this sister who made this book in New Orleans um, in the Congo Square. We actually got to dance together. She no longer lives in New Orleans. She lives in Oakland, but she came down to visit when I was living in New Orleans. And um, we were all in the Congo Square and we danced together. She taught us some um, songs for Oshun. And it was just really, really beautiful. Um, I definitely recommend this book as well. I have this one. Um, so now I'm going to go through some fictional some fictional stories because as much as it's important for us to have the information um, and guiding tools, I think that as we have kids, especially, or teenagers, or even ourselves, just reading literature that is very reflective of our African identities, not just our Black identities, but African identities. So these books that I'm sharing are actually books that I recommended because I'm a school social worker, um, but I actually gave this book list to or it was more books than these, but these books that I'm sharing are included on the book list that I gave to the language arts and reading teachers for my school, um, just because I believe it's important for our youth to be able to have and read about characters that uh, practice African spirituality or that uh, involve or are engaged with African spirituality in some way. So that way African spirituality can become normalized over time versus it being something that is so um, outside of their, 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 their vision unless they choose to practice, if that makes sense. So these books are more so for even if you didn't want to practice just to get your kids or even yourself some literature to have fun with African spirituality instead of just to learn from it, if that makes sense. So Sukuyan is a book that I read in that class that I told y'all about that I took in college. We read Brown Girl in the Ring. Um, both of these amazing books, uh, I have this book as well, Children of Blood and Bone. Y'all probably have seen this around, uh, Tommy Adeyemi. Um, Y'all probably have seen this book around because it's become very, very popular. Um, she has a, a, it's a series. So this is only the first book of the series. But let me tell you, I ain't done with the book yet, but this book is definitely amazing. And honestly, I haven't been into fiction for a very long time. And I kind of found myself only being intrigued by fiction that includes African identity um, and African spirituality at this point. So um, with that being said, I think this book does a great job. It's Afrofuturistic. Um, so again, it's set in the future, I believe. And with that being said, I just love those concepts. So that's why I included that. And actually, that's all the books that I have here. Um, there are other books, of course. There are a lot of books on Amazon. All of these books can be found on Amazon. Some of them at Target, some of them at Barnes & Noble. But for sure, you can find them if you search them online. They're findable. They have Kindles, all of that great stuff. But these books are just tools for beginners or in the beginning of your journey. And from there, you know, you can search whatever you feel moved to search after that. Um, even before that, but I'm sorry, I'm looking at the birds. But even before that, but the bottom line is just that I wanted to just give a basis. I didn't want to give like an extravagant book list that people felt overwhelmed by, but just giving y'all some simple tools that have helped me along my journey um, and praying that it will help you along yours. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below with those questions. If you have any topic suggestions as it relates to African spirituality or other things, 
please leave those below. And if you feel like this video may be helpful for others, please share this video, like this video, um, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. This is not um, the only video that I have on African spirituality, nor is it the only video that I plan to make. Um, and for those who don't know, I make a lot of different kind of videos. Really, whatever y'all want me to talk about, I get on here and talk about. I'm pretty passionate about us. I'm pretty passionate about motherhood. I'm pretty passionate about um, all things that are creative and um, artistic. And with that being said, I just really, really thank y'all for tuning in. I thank y'all for being a part of my channel and my community. Uh, thank you for even letting me see that there is a community that exists for me um, outside of my surroundings, my immediate surroundings. So I pray for you all. I pray you are wealthy and hell during, uh, I said hell, my bad, wealthy in health, <laughs> wealthy in health and finance during this time. Y'all, I can't talk today. I don't know what the fuck is going on with me, but regardless of it, um, I pray for your safety. I pray for you and your family's health and wellness each and every day. I pray that you continue to live your life that's according to alignment of your spirit and your highest destiny. And I pray that these books or whatever tools that come along your journey help you to get there sooner than later. Ashe, Ashe, Asheo. Peace, love, black power all day, every day. It ain't no other way. You feel me?